all. Access for all at one point was just the name of a machine uh, ran by Hactic Network. As you can see, it's slightly opened. Um, and this machine was, was the first machine that was not just doing mail and news transfer over the UUCP network, but it was also connected over IP using a 19.2 slip line to, uh, to the university building or to a building where the internet was, NLNet it was called. Um, Access for All was, was, as it grew, because it was first called Hactic Network, but then later the name changed to Access for All. And Access for All was a, was a very, it, it grew into being a, a, a large provider, into a large business, but it was really uh, started off as, as more of a political statement and an attempt at sharing the cost of that internet line, which was very expensive. We started on May 1st, 93, and we needed 500 people to share the cost with. And we had given ourselves till December of 93 to, to find these 500 people. And then we had lots of media coverage uh, uh, on May 1st, and we logged uh, a customer number 500 on May 2nd, uh, knowing that we had a problem, but of a different kind than we thought we had. Um, it was a very, was a time of really crazy, crazy growth. I'm not sure all of you can imagine what it's like if you've never ran a company and uh, uh, your customer base is growing at 10 or 15% per month or more. Um, we had uh, uh, people calling friends to come in and please help because we need somebody to, man to administer this or to put up modems or to hook up cables or crimp something or do something. Um, and uh, our hiring policy consisted of uh, 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 offering a job to people that had obviously been there for weeks or months uh, uh, or obviously doing something useful, uh, giving them a few hundred euros uh, or guilders back then. Um, to uh, go to the store and get themselves a second-hand desk and, ch and chair uh, so they could make themselves a decent workplace uh, in this really old decrepit building that we were in. Um, we had crazy policies like uh, uh, new employees were asked long after Access for All was, was a serious company. We asked new employees to either learn how to juggle with three balls or to paint their hair red if they couldn't do it within a month. Uh, and we found uh, through, this was all just, just us playing jokes on people, but we found that that's actually a very useful question to weed out people that can't deal with the weirdness of, of, of the company as it was at that time. Um, we had uh, uh, salespeople from Cisco uh, se secretly changing into jeans when they, got, when they were in their car <laughs> so they uh, uh, would not upset us with their suits and ties. In, 2000, in 2005, uh, or in 1995, 2005, in 1995, uh, uh, we were uh, at the forefront of one of the, uh, one of the defining uh, moments of Dutch internet and, and possibly of the internet as a whole, uh, when our offices were raided by the Church of Scientology. The Church of Scientology is a very interesting, crazy cult. Uh, they believe in space aliens and, and all sorts of stuff, but they're very, they're very litigious. They like, they like using uh, uh, the process of law to get at their enemies. And they had lots of enemies because they were basically extorting everybody that joined the Church of Scientology for all their money, uh, making them pay for very expensive courses. And somebody had put online all the course materials proving, A, that, that they were paying for ridiculous secondhand science fiction uh, uh, stuff at L. Ron Hubbard their great church leader once wrote. Um, so this made the church very angry and the church had until then destroyed all its adversaries. In America that's a little bit easier to do than in Holland, but also they had lots of money for lawyers and uh, one of the people on, uh, uh, on Access for All had put these materials on his website. And we made the defense, which is now very common, we said, look, this is not our website, it's this person's website. And you have to talk to this person, we're just the carrier. Um, and uh, uh, Scientology pushed for the courts, but they were, there was a raid, there was people searching the offices, there was even American cult members in our offices because it was a civil raid, which I didn't even know was possible. Um, the company grew and grew and grew uh, uh, as more and more people got on the internet. Uh, uh, became a very, very large company. I left in, in 1997. Uh, because very large companies aren't so much my thing. My, my value to the company was probably when it was below 10 people. 
my value. Other people, uh, most notably my uh, co-conspirator, Felipe Rodriguez, uh, were much more important in the phase to bring it to 50 people than I was. Um, where is Access for All now? Uh, it's a huge company. It hires over 300 people. This is the corporate headquarters. Uh, much more funny, uh, this building, which is down the street from them, uh, is a building they now use as one of their co-location facilities. It's where I rent a rack. Uh, my new company rents a rack from Access for All in, in this building. Uh, and you can see the big fence in front of it. This is, this is the phone switch that we used to go trashing at when, in the hectic days. This is the fence we used to climb uh, to get to phone company documents in the dumpster. And now Access for All rents it as, as their colo space. Um, I then went on to form a company called ITSX together with Jop de Haas, who's another speaker here. Uh, we did computer security consulting. Uh, uh, I wasn't so much involved in the day-to-day in the -day technical work. Uh, I did publicity and I did uh, uh, company policy a little bit. Um, what I remember from that days, uh, from those days, and, and, and I think what's still true, is that computer security business is really strange. Uh, many of you are in it. Computer security business uh, is often sold a little bit uh, in a mafia model. Uh, unscrupulous people will just, if they want to sell their services, uh, uh, they talk to their customers and it's really, the sales rap goes, really nice company you have here, really dependent on IT. Let's hope nothing happens to it. Um, even the good people uh, that want to sell IT services, we, we think of ourselves as, as different than that. We're not the, the, the cheap uh, panic salespeople. We try to educate our customers. We try to tell our customers what's, uh, what the risks are. Um, we tell them uh, the little lock in your browser doesn't mean everything's secure. Uh, security is, is not a project. You can't just buy something and be secure. It's a process. You have to think about it. No point in having a really heavy steel door if the windows are open. We try to tell our customers all these things. You know, Think about security in, 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 in a, in a grown-up, sort of organized fashion. Uh, and think about your risks and, and, and what are your threats. Uh, needs to be designed in from the start, this whole security thing. We try. And then we're met invariably by blank stares. Tell me this isn't true. We're met, uh, and then we try again and we try again, and every time it's the same blank stares. Like, uh, and at some point we think, well, somebody, something's got to happen. These people really have a problem. And so what we end up figuring out is what's the most What's the least unproductive direction for this person to be running in in blind panic? And then we turn around 180 degrees and paint really big ghosts. Ooh, look at all these scary ghosts over there. And then they run in blind panic exactly in the direction we wanted. And, and we find ourselves sort of maneuvering our customers by sort of changing the directions of the really big ghosts and having them run in blind panic, which isn't the same as, as, as what we set out to do. Uh, that's sort of my, my thoughts on the computer security world. Um, I then, uh, uh, we sold ITSX to another company called Madison Gurkha. Um, went to set up Cryptophone. Cryptophone builds uh, Windows mobile telephones, uh, uh, basically modified HTC phones uh, that come with a, a completely tricked out ROM. Uh, so uh, you can determine how secure you want to be by turning off all sorts of functionality. One of the things we turn off, of course, is over-the-air uh, uh, updates and all stuff like that. Um, and it's, a, it's a, a telephone that does encrypted voice over the CSD data channel, so the old uh, GSM data channel. Uh, uses uh, Diffie-Hellman, uses Blowfish, AES-256 uh, to encrypt the, the voice. Uh, we also have public key encrypted SMSs, so using SMS as the transport channel, also for the keys. Uh, Anyway, uh, and the source is available, so you can actually look at it. Just uh, something I did. Um, then came 2006. I'm sort of fast forwarding a bit. And in 2006, uh, I got very upset because the city of Amsterdam switched to voting machines. And this is the voting machine they made me use. It's called the SDU New Vote. And the SDU New Vote. Um, is actually an embedded Windows machine. 
it's embedded Windows uh, uh, running on a machine that has a, a built-in GPRS.